Today, friends, I'm going to show you how to make this fantastic shape totally in Tinkercad. So let's get cracking. Friends, this project starts at my Patreon. I've highlighted it before. You can check the bit.ly up above. These are posts by other users. I do want to remind you, when you make a post, you've got to click on it once to add all the other details. This is a fantastic card by Master Copier. Master Copier also has a fun engine. This is a link to the design, and it's set to copy and tinker. Totally cool stuff. And then finally, the one I want to highlight today. This is created by ZDP189. This design totally intrigues me. It's hard to believe that is made with just a couple Tinkercad shapes. Of course, friends, you can now click on the link. And it is set to copy and tinker, so don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give it a reaction before you copy and tinker. So ZDP was in a Fusion 360 Discord. Somebody was showing how they made their own version of this. And he said, hey, I think I can do that in Tinkercad. Let me show you how it works. So these are tables and they're done with the surface grid. I'm gonna leave this one alone because there's not as much surface area. I like this one better. If we simply ungroup it, you can see we've got the orange shape and it's cut by that grid. Now, if we click on this grid, see how it's grouped? The grid of square columns is limited to a 10 by 10 pattern, and ZDP wanted to cut more of this, so that's why he used four so that he got the correct size for the project he wanted. If we click on this tool, you will see it is what is called a surface. If you've never seen this shape before, you do need to search for it. Of course, if you type surface or SURF, you can find it. It is a cool looking shape, but unless you know some math or how to make these formulas, it's really pretty tricky to use. So ZDP found this formula where this is how you write X to the fourth power times Y to the fourth power, and then just filled the ranges in with negative 1.1 and positive 0.1 throughout the project. Real quickly, I wanna hide the holes. I'm gonna just click on front view, and I'm just going to grab the corner of the holes and do control H, grab these corners and do control H and let's grab underneath. That's an easy location to do control H and hide. So if we look at our design, this thickness of point one happens down here. If I change this to point two, Notice it thickens it and the point goes lower. I can even go to numbers like 0.5 and press enter. That takes the surface and adjust it. I really don't want it to look like this. So I told ZDP that I didn't like that strategy. So let me show you the one that he came up with. I will take this and bring those back. And let's do that control G so we can get that awesome shape once again. So that is created by simply using the surface and the grid of squares. To get to the final project of this process, I'm gonna give you a bit.ly, it's bit.ly stool ZDP. When you press enter, of course, it takes you to the project. This is a stackable stool. Of course, it's set to copy and tinker, so don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give a reaction before you copy and tinker. Of course, that gives you a exact replica of what ZDP had made. Once again, the goal here was to make this one so that it was more 3D printable. Remember, the other one had such thin legs that it wasn't supported down there. So let me quickly show you how this was solved. I'm going to click on Settings, and I'm going to make the world larger just so we have more room to play. I'm going to make it 400 wide. Once again, you just simply click to make that go away. When you're trying to learn about somebody's project, I like to do control D. I'm going to move across and I'm going to ungroup it. And then it gives us the grid that's obviously cut out. This one is scaled down so it is a single grid. So it also made the project a little more efficient. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to do control D and I'm going to move it across. So now I've just isolated those two from this one. Now here is where the thickness change becomes apparent. If we ungroup, there is a plug that has been created. Notice there are two shapes here. This one is really the plug. This one just trims it at the bottom. So I'm gonna just shift nudge this over here. And then I'm gonna show you inside this shape. If we double click it, this part right here is our old surface. It has been turned into a hole, and when we click over here to finish the edit, you can see it trims that outside edge that we needed for the other project. 
The next step was simply to cut out the insides. I will show you this as well. Once again, it is a plug and it's trimmed with that same type surface. Of course, when these all get grouped, we get this awesome shape over here, which is printable. Of course, when you print it, do it face down. Now ZDP chose to make it sturdier for 3D printing by doing the two millimeters. Check out this trick. We're gonna do it at one millimeter just to prove we can. So I'm gonna simply grab that do control D and move it down here. So that way we're not breaking the original. Then we're gonna ungroup it. And I'm going to hide these for a moment, making sure I've got the grid of square columns and hide. Now I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna make sure I've got this one inside. I don't want the bottom one, I want this one. It's the hole. We're gonna set the nudge to one millimeter and I'm going to do Alt Shift Stretch. Instead of that number 55, we're just gonna type 56 and press enter. And what it did was it moved one millimeter in all three directions, X, Y, and Z. So when I click outside, we have just trimmed this to half the thickness it was. Now, once again, ZDP wanted to make his really strong. I just want to see how it works with a one millimeter wall as well. If we do show all, we can bring those back. And then I want to highlight this skill. You can take two shapes, a hole and a solid in Tinkercad. And if you choose export, so you're not even grouping them, check this out. It does the grouping in the background. I'm going to call this V2 of the stackable stool, save it in my 3D modeling, and let's hit save. Today I'm going to print using the Artillery M1. If we double click on Artillery Studio, we're using version 1.08. It is based on Orca, so if you've used Bamboo Studio, you probably recognize it. And we're simply going to add our file, just like this. There's V2 Stackable Stool. Now, of course, when it comes in, it is not the direction I want to print it from. I'm going to simply rotate it, grabbing this green handle, and if you come inside the middle, it's snap, 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 and then boom, pops right back up. We're going to use generic PLA. I'm going to use the 0.2 standard settings, and we can simply hit slice plate, and you'll note it's going to be done in about 30 minutes. Finally, since it's based on Clipper, we can simply hit print. Printer is found. I'm gonna turn on the time lapse and let's hit print. After a moment, I'm gonna bounce to the device menu. Of course, we can hit device status. Right now, the video is stopped. After a moment, you can hit play. Of course, I need to put mine back together. Of course, it is much smarter to be ahead of the game than like me catching this right now. I do like the quality of the camera as the M1 Pro gets to work all right everybody so here are the prints this one is on the artillery m1 this one is on the bamboo labs p1s as you can see they turned out absolutely fantastic this is polar filament bubblegum color absolutely love it this is the polar filament sapphire and then this is the original one i printed with the thin legs and as you can see it just doesn't quite stand up the way we would want the other bonus of these is they are stackable. How cool is that? As I wrap up, if you happen to come up with a different formula that turns out something awesome, please take a moment to share it with the comments here or wherever you're watching this video. Of course, I also want to send a huge shout out to ZDP189 for sharing the awesome skills in the Patreon user groups. A quick shout out as well to everybody that's supporting me via YouTube memberships. Absolutely love how that group is growing. Don't forget you can get in for as low as $5 a month. And one of the coolest benefits of being a supporter is you get early access to videos. I also want to say thank you to everybody that is supporting me via Patreon. Love of that group is growing. We are almost up to 200 members. Don't forget, of course, that is where you can find the awesome messaging board. And that is where this project started. Of course, you can learn more with the bit.ly up above or the link in the description. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or click subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day, and keep tinkering.